Hi, I'm Scott, and today I'm going to show you how to build a 3D printed French cleat tool holder on Dad It Yourself. Hey, so for the last couple of years, as many of you know, I collect tools, and I've been using this French cleat wall storage system. I had a lot of videos on how I built the French cleat wall, how I built the tool holders and such like that. And I'll have links to those down in the description. Well, the great thing about these is I can make them out of scrap wood. They have virtually no expense. Uh, I can make them to fit the tool, the size, um, you know, wherever it goes and such. Um, the advantage to that is, you know, they work. They're strong. You know, the tool doesn't have to be that heavy or even in the case of a heavy tool like this 18 gauge stapler, it holds just fine. The disadvantage is, is each tool holder is really semi-custom to that tool. Now, I'm going into the link system and I'm starting to use their portable uh, packout system. So a lot of tools are staying in the packout boxes not, and they're not making it back onto this wall. Well, if I leave an empty tool holder, I don't really have a tool to put back on there because that holder was made for another tool. I got lucky with this one. This is where my regular 18 gauge um, Brad Nailer goes and it's in the pack out, but the crown stapler fits right in there as well. 99% of the way. It's a little tight right here. But so what I thought, you know, maybe I'd try something a little different and use 3D printing to build more generic tool holders that I can use for all kinds of different tools. So this is my office here and this is where I do all my digital manufacturing, media production, whatever. Um, I have a Cricut vinyl printer. That's an Explore one. It's a little bit older. I have a dedicated laptop. And then this is my longer LK4 3D printer. And this is a really nice printer. I really enjoy this one. Uh, it's pretty built, pretty well built. Um, better than my first one, which was pretty much all plastic. This one is all steel construction with a heated bed. It's got a cool LED screen in the front. But we're going to add something new to the stable. So I'd like to start off this video by thanking the folks over at Longer 3D. They're the ones that provided me this printer for an unboxing and review. So let's get right into it. One thing I'd like to add is this unit came exceptionally packed. Everything was hermetically sealed, wrapped in plastic, and fit with the foam rubber so nothing was jiggling or loose. If you end up getting one of these printers for yourself, please don't consider this video a tutorial on how to assemble it. I rushed through the steps pretty quick. Longer does provide an outstanding video and I'll have a link to that in the description. So the instructions look pretty simple. It's uh, looks like seven steps on just two sides of this piece of paper. Let's go ahead and put this thing together. The longer LK5 Pro comes 90% pre-assembled with a stable triangular structure. It's a professional FDM 3D printer with a printing size of 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 400 millimeters. That's roughly 11 and a half by 11 and a half by 15 inches. With dual inclined rods to hold your Z-axis solid, this steady triangular structure is for better quality of 3D printer is, and again, comes 90% pre-assembled in the factory before delivery.
The LK5 Pro is an integrated with three kits of TMC2208 chipsets for the X, Y, and Z axis for extremely quiet printing, which also reduces less noise from the motors. As a professional 3D printer, the LK5 Pro is equipped with a high temperature resistant Teflon tube that stands up to 280 degrees Celsius and it's not going to easily clog inside the nozzle and provide constant quality of printing. This FDM 3D printer is equipped with an upgraded heated ceramic coated glass which provides outstanding adhesion as well as model removal. While the standard printer is equipped with a single blower, a dual blower kit option is available to be upgraded. This FDM 3D printer is built with a 4.3 inch full color touchscreen and integrated for better friendly user interface with better interaction with the printer. The LK5 Pro is available on Amazon or directly from Longer 3D from their European or US warehouses. So here's some of the models I've been printing. Uh, this one right here is for a grinder and I took the same model and I just blew it up and sized it and this is for a five inch random orbital sander. And then there's those tool holders with the French cleat incorporated in them. And here's your battery blank that you can use on just about anything. And these little clippy things here are to hold a furnace filter on a box fan like I have up there I'm gonna rip the tape off and use those to hold a filter Wow, I've, it's really dirty so those are cool and it doesn't have to stop with just tool holders I mean you can be doing uh, dust collection nozzles or drawer pulls or replacement parts for something I mean it's endless you know what you're willing to look for or model or whatever your mind um, brings you to. But that said, if you're going to model something up as a replacement part, you know, it may not be worth your time to do that. If it's available for just a couple of cents or a couple of dollars online, I'd go ahead and do that route, you know, unless you really want to challenge yourself. So where do I get my models? Well, the internet, of course. Many of the tool holders you will need for whatever brand have already been modeled. My favorite place is Thingiverse, but there are many other free and pay for download websites. In some cases, you can even have the model printed and mailed to you for a fee. This is especially true of the website Etsy. So here's a model that I previously did. What I did was download one of the generic models from Thingiverse, and then I imported it into Microsoft 3D Builder, which is a free and pre-installed application on most Windows computers. You can use any type of 3D modeling software you're comfortable with, including things like SketchUp or Fusion 360. This is just what I'm comfortable with. I added a few geometric shapes that will provide me the support board, a cleat, and then the bracing for that. The width is your choice, but I've been printing everything at five millimeters thick. And just for the record, that wedge is 24 millimeters by 12 millimeters. And when it's rotated to 90 degrees, this will give you the three quarter wedge you need for your French cleat. All these items are sized, placed adjacent to each other, and then merged together. This can then be exported into a slicer program and printed.
So when you're printing these tool holders, you have to take the direction of print into consideration. For example, this particular one, I printed in this orientation. So it was being filled from this position and layered this way. Uh, it gave me a quicker print time, uh, less support. I only had to really support the bottom here and this area here, but that means that the seams are going this way. Well, in this particular point, that would be a horizontal seam right at my weight point. So we could potentially fail right here. This one I printed in this orientation going this way. So it was more linear to what would be considered the pressure point going this way and there wasn't that type of fill. So this probably wouldn't be your fail point. So this one is definitely probably more stronger than this one, but this one probably took about 20 minutes longer to print. I hope this video has shown you how accessible and affordable 3D printing has become and how you could incorporate one in your workshop. I'd love to hear your ideas and comments about what you would do with a 3D printer. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you do, hit the bell for notifications. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. Subscribe button's right down here. Thanks for watching. Dad it yourself. Man, that thing is quiet.